So I stayed up all night thinking about the truck bed. Eh, not quite, but I, I did think about it a lot. And I have made a decision. I don't think I'll change my mind. I'm going to do this with flowers because I have so many seeds that I don't know what to do with that I was walking around this morning. You can see the sun hasn't even barely come up. It's still dark. It's starting to peek through. And I was looking around and I thought, I've got the chair gardens. I've got all my gardens, you know, and I want to plant in my new dog kennel. I think that's exciting. I've got other ideas too I'm doing. And I don't want Gary to be moving this. We have to empty it to move it and then he's gonna winch it up and do all, no, no. You know what? It's been here for over 20 years and it's, it's thriving. I mean, it's growing shark fin melon. It's growing beautiful Swiss chard, which I just made a lot of food this early this morning I got up with it. I've got so many things going on. So I looked at it and I thought, what would be the smartest thing to do? The smartest, easiest thing to do would be get rid of the tool. I can use the tool somewhere else and let it do its thing. So I'm, and the buckets. I've got all those beautiful buckets in there and those are valuable to me now because I have now decided to start growing a lot of potatoes. And though potatoes aren't too expensive, you can get five pounds of potatoes for about five, six dollars if they're organic. Sometimes they're a little bit more. But you know what? There is nothing better than a potato you pulled out of the ground, washed it real good, and just cook it. No skinning, no nothing. Yes, you can cure it, you can put it away so the skin will get hard and you can store it. But here in Southern California, I can really grow potatoes all year. All I have to do is keep it out of the cold wet so it doesn't rot, find a microclimate around here, and it will keep going. Find a sunny place and just keep it a little bit dry. I've got potatoes to harvest all over here now in five gallon buckets. Now, why do I do it in five gallon buckets? Because for me, it's the easiest thing to do. I just pick it up, tip it in a wheelbarrow, go through and collect everything I want, load the bottom back with leaves, leaf matter, something I wouldn't eat, put that all in the bottom, put the soil back in, load, some, load one or two potatoes back into it, depending on the size, and then cover it up and it will start to grow again. It's a constant cycle. Every three months, you can add potatoes. So with that, you can plant a bunch of different buckets around, because you're not gonna eat potatoes every single night, though I probably would, but you will have a constant source of potatoes. So all these buckets in here can give me a constant supply. And trying to reach back there, and I did, or trying to grow watermelon back there, or squash, and I've been successful. I've grown all kinds of zucchini, and I grew some spaghetti squash. Oh, spaghetti squash I grew in here. Many years ago, when we first got this, we filled it up, and we had so much spaghetti squash. The whole thing was covered that we were giving it away and nobody wanted to look at spaghetti squash anymore, including us. But I think right now, if I pull the buckets out, I can take these beautiful buckets and I can put them in my chair garden and they can be fed the water coming from my totes into the bucket and grow potatoes all around in my chair garden. There's no work. It's just a matter of putting the potatoes in there, putting it under the tote, let the tote water run into that then I'm not building up water where I have to worry about mosquitoes. It's feeding the potatoes because the totes will already be full of matter. You know how I set my totes up. And it will be no thought. It'll be no thought gardening. So that's what I've thought, thought about. The other thing too is, like I said, I've got so many seeds. I've got marigold seeds. I've got these marigolds growing that I didn't like. They were kind of crinkly and it was the look of them. I, I, they look like crepe paper, but little flowers. And I thought, do I throw them away? No, the bees liked them, the hummingbirds picked around. So I'm gonna take all those and throw them in there. I'm gonna throw zinnias in here and whatever wins, wins. In other words, whatever plants wanna grow, let them grow. Maybe next year I'll change it up. And maybe I won't be happy with it. Maybe I'll be ecstatic with it. Maybe. I could put some geraniums that trail and trail down in front. That would look really pretty. There's a lot of stuff I can do, but these buckets are worth money-wise. If you want to think about money, you can grow potatoes in there constantly and not have to think about it. 
just put it someplace where you can hit them with water. They don't like to get super dry, but they don't want to be too watered. So potatoes are really easy to grow because you don't have to water them every day. So I'm going to get these buckets out. I don't know when. It may not be right now. It might be the spring. I'm going to take all this grass that's growing. I don't want to pick too much, but this grass will all go back in. Just go through, pick it all, and drop. Chop and drop. Now, the reason I don't want to pick a lot of it now is even though it's not my favorite, it's a weed, a lot of these seed heads are feeding birds here for the winter because there's not a lot. It's very green right now because we're having a very mild season for December and now in January. So I don't know what's going to be. But in the meantime, they are feeding on that. So I'm going to leave that. The other thing I'll let grow in here will be sow thistle. I see sow thistle coming up all through here. If I keep it damp, I can have dandelion growing here. Dandelion doesn't grow here. It's so funny. I'm up above the city on a hilltop, let's say. It's not quite, there's more hills back there, but I'm on a hilltop. Here we don't grow dandelion. Just go a mile down the hill and there's dandelion everywhere because that, again, needs a microclimate. Dandelion needs a lot of water. We have less water here, we dry quicker, than areas just down below. But I do have dandelion growing around the house because the rocks that I've got in the driveway are holding the water and the dandelion's growing in there. Am I gonna put rocks in here? No, no, no. I'm just gonna chop and drop everything. I'll tell you right now, I can predict and tell you what's gonna happen. I will have Swiss chard grow growing in here because it's been growing in here for years and it's perfect because I come out here and forage through it. The shark fin melon, I probably, which is this, probably can't get rid of it, so it's gonna come up and that's okay. If other things come up, I don't want them, I can pull it out. And tomatillos, because those little tomatillos fall, even the small ones you don't notice, they're like, oh, these are too small to bring in. They look like a pea. They fall into the ground. They wait for the right moment to grow. They actually will not grow until it's the right moment. And the moment it's the right moment, it will take off and grow everywhere. So I'll have tomatillos in here. I will have Swiss chard. I will have shark fin melon. And then I will have, of course, the sow thistle and then whatever seeds I throw in there. That's pretty much it. If there was zucchini in here, the only way zucchini would grow is if a plant or a fruit was left in there that I didn't see and that has happened before. And in spring, when the days are really starting to get longer, more in March, they'll grow. Because certain times of the year, you can't stop the seeds, no matter what the temperature is. I have seen zucchini take off because it's the right temperature exactly. So I think that will be really a lot of fun. I'll probably hit this with a little white paint instead of painting it. I was going to paint it once a different color, but I think I'll leave it white just because. Because it's been, it's been a symbol of this side of the property. It's been here. Somebody lived here years ago and he parked it here and he left it and it's kind of rotting away, doing it its own thing. I have baby rabbits that have been underneath born here, including on the top. Hawks sometimes come through and sit up here just to look around because they nest in the pepper tree. And um, it's here. So give me your comments if you think there's something else I should do in here, but I, I think that's what I'm going to do. I could put plants on the edge here because I do have a nice edge. I've got a hose here, so I've got water right at my beck and call at any moment, which I water my chair garden with. And I think this will be a win-win, like I said. I want to concentrate on stuff that you guys can set up. You guys can set up a dog kennel if you cannot garden because of deer or raccoon or who knows, squirrels. And I've told you how we can fix that up. I look at it like, how many of you have a truck bed sitting out your door in the yard that you're not using that's rotting away in the ground? Probably a few of you out there with that. I love doing gardens that I think somebody can take something from and that's what I want to do. So I have decided to go with that route. I think it'll look pretty. Just think of the hummingbirds. The hummingbirds nest all through the trees here. And if we don't have a super bloom this year, where they take off and leave to the high deserts and mountains and everything, then they should stay here and nest. This past year, we've had very few hummingbird nests because they left. And a lot of my regulars that winter here that usually are here all year, they disappear and they didn't come back until now. So I'm hoping they'll stay. And then when they stay and have babies, then their babies stay here and they forage around here and then they go ahead and have babies here. So I don't know 
what's going to happen to the babies that were born in the desert or other areas or did they not nest as much because when they're here they do two three and sometimes four nests so this will be a whole new year for hummingbirds for me so i let you i want to let you know today that that's what i'm going to do i can't get rid of this and i'm scared to death to, to compost these things because until i know what i want to do with them these things are the best growing plant here I've even got one sitting in the house that's been sitting for almost a year and, I, and it looks perfect from the day I brought it in. It's just sitting there like a little ornamental statue and I don't know, but I think this will be really good. Leave it here, maybe do some seedlings or different things on the top or grow lettuce. Well, lettuce will be a little difficult, not right now, but later on because it gets a lot of sun in this area so the flowers will do wonderful just make sure i get flowers that are loving the sun because they won't get a lot of shade but remember there'll be microclimates in here so shade loving flowers that grow underneath and peek through can do fine in here too but i'm gonna let it do its thing and this way i can concentrate on everything else in the garden and maybe be able to get to more of your questions, which I, I read them, but I can't get to all of them, but I do. Sometimes I go back three months later and I'm answering your question. I get to as many as I can, and this will take one thing off my list of taking care of, but in the meantime, I get my buckets back and I can grow potatoes or anything I, else I want in them. Remember, buckets, you can grow zucchini, one plant per five gallon bucket. You can grow celery in there. We've talked about plants we don't want to grow with other plants, and we'll talk more about that real soon. Swiss chard, obviously beautiful. This is coming up. You can do a lot of stuff with buckets. You can line up an entire garden with buckets. I could put buckets along here, but I think I'm going to be able to um, step up to it. So I don't want to do buckets. I want to go right up to the truck bed, be able to get in there and maybe pick some flowers and put them in a pretty vase and bring them in the house. So there'll be a lot of stuff I want to do. And if it works out, let it just all go back in the fall, go back in the winter, turn into beautiful brown flowers and brown foliage where the birds will come in and feast on the seeds and whatever seeds they don't get will go back into the ground and the cycle will start all over on its own and I won't have to do anything. So with that, have a wonderful day. Gardening season's almost here. I'm already starting some seeds in the house but it's a little early for most of us to start seeds, but we're gonna get into that too now because I've got another way I'm doing it that is so easy and the containers are free and it's just a little tweak difference that I've been doing for years. You can go back and see what I do. It's just been working fabulous. So with that, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. I know, I have to eat you. I just have to figure out what to do with you.